Item number, SCP-797. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-797 is to be contained in a room six meters in length and six meters in width. Walls, including floor and ceiling, must be at least 10 centimeters thick. Room is to be airtight, with filtering system to clean the air of any bacteria. Every seven days, a human cadaver of any age, condition, gender, or race is to be deposited in SCP-797's containment. After a period of 24 hours, the cadaver is to be removed. Under no circumstances are any personnel to interact with SCP-797. Should SCP-797 enter a rage state, SCP-797-1 is to be eliminated via incineration and a new cadaver wheeled in, prompting a reset of schedule. Description SCP-797 is an oval-shaped object attracted to either dying or freshly deceased humans. SCP-797 is almost always seen with SCP-797-1, a collection of human flesh from various cadavers. When accompanied by SCP-797-1, subject will attempt to interact with any living human entering its containment. Testing on SCP-797 reveals that it does not react to non-human bodies, although it is known to mistake organs from other animals to be human provided the organ is of comparable size and shape as that of a human. The subject appears to have an understanding of human anatomy and will attempt to interact with any personnel that enter its containment, with varying degrees of success. Upon failure, SCP-797 will enter a rage state and begin to dismantle SCP-797-1 launching pieces of flesh at those whom it had attempted to interact with beforehand, at a velocity recorded of at least 70 meters per second. Contact with the pieces causes no harm beyond normal consequence of being exposed to rotting human flesh. The impact has been known to cause broken bones, cracked ribs, torn organs, and internal hemorrhaging. When without a body, SCP-797 will attempt to escape its containment. Due to its small size, about 5 centimeters in diameter, it will attempt to hide under the clothing of any living human that enters. It also will attempt to hide in shadows, apparently trying to trick personnel into thinking that the subject has escaped. When surrounded by SCP-797-1, SCP-797 shows no desire to escape instead focusing its attention to attempt interaction with any living human that enters its enclosure. No contact beyond those in the containment procedures is to be attempted without permission from personnel ranked level 4 or higher. SCP-797-1 is controlled by the subject using a currently unknown method. The puppet is built around SCP-797 with the subject at its center. When separated from its controller, SCP-797-1 loses all cohesiveness. Body parts must be periodically replaced due to natural rot. Tests on samples collected from the subject reveal no significant abnormalities. Rarely, the subject will attempt to use SCP-797-1 to talk, producing a sound accompanied by a release of bacteria in the air. If this situation occurs, no fewer than three agents are to perform Procedure 797-A. SCP-797 was found at a local hospital in Nunavut, Canada. When found, subject was collecting various body parts from patients around the hospital, and SCP-797-1 consisted of a torso, including 30 centimeters of an elderly woman suffering from pancreatic cancer both lungs from an adult ringed seal, three kidneys, ringed seal, human, donor organ, and the skeletal upper torso from a 13-year-old male, dying of Hospital evacuated 
and all involved citizens provided with Class B amnestic. Addendum Dr. KM's Note Requesting permission to close contact with SCP-797 over months. I believe through detailed analysis of the subject's actions, we can discern more about whether or not it is sapient and its level of intelligence and begin communication instead of simply entrapping. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-796, River Cat, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.